I'm worried about making a sound bite that's going to sound like hate. So you have like really rich people yeah. who have realized that the ANC is not a good investment yeah. right? and are also livid. Any black person who's a billionaire or who comes from a billionaire family mm. could at any time reach out to us and they're not. So you're going to do a podcast with Steve Hoffman. I wanted to ask you mm. before I answer Rough thumbsuck. Yeah, yeah. From a YouTube perspective, mm. locally, mm. what percentage of votes do you think we can potentially influence by next year? So what happened there? Why, there was some controversy where people said it was captured. Is, it, is that true? Spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. And today I am here to blow up the internet <laughs> <laughs> with Penwell, Lotra Penwell, the Black Pen. That's what's up. Sis, thank you so much for the invite, bro. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me on your platform. Mm. That I interview was really quite something. I got so many comments, so many messages, so many inbox messages. Sure. You're doing some serious things. Hey? You're here to take over YouTube. Like, uh, what's going on? serious things so I kind of had to sit with you because mm. the reason I got into vodcasting because mm. I, I don't think the South African market is really ready for podcasting mm. in terms of the audio only um, I'm very big on dope conversations with interesting people Yeah, and it's obvious that you're one of them and we're still a relatively new industry I think in South Africa mm. In America, you see the same guys on so many multiple platforms. Yeah. So what you appreciate is getting someone who has an understanding of mic control, understanding how we roll, has a brain, um, has amazing content and an amazing story. So I had to. Yourself, Kulego and Keu. Yeah. Obviously, out. people like Odnota. So yeah. uh, I'm not going to say we're the pioneers because it's actually too early. But we have to be the guys to drive this as much as possible. So mm. I have to, we have to, and we have to keep it going. What I mean by that is having these conversations as regularly no as possible until smarter, more talented kids come and yeah. blow us out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Where did the name The Black Pen come from? Um, where did it come from? I never wanted to study accounting. Mm. I was raised in Newcastle. Born and raised in Newcastle, born and bred in Newcastle, in KZN. Mm. Uh, I did okay at school, better than okay. Read brilliant. Yeah, I think it's pretty smart what academically. Did, what did least. you like? Okay, just tell us about that because that's quite. When I saw you, when I saw firstly when I like I came to know you on the Hustlers Corner. That's yeah. when I was like, whoa, okay, now you're doing some some serious things. Um, but I was like, nah, there's this 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 guy's really smart. But Jeez. you're like accessible, so people might underestimate the accessibility for just sure. commonality. But then I was like, no, there's strategy here. There's forethought. So wait, so so tell us about matric. Like, how did you do at school? Like, oh, I didn't do well in matric. Oh, okay. So you just did well Which at really school. Sucks. I yeah. so I was a. <laughs> Konje, you're a nerd, so we have to discuss nerdish things. I actually didn't do that well in matric either. Like, really, I only found my my Were you disappointed? voice. I mean, semi, yeah, but like, it was fine, but it wasn't like... Okay. Yeah. Um, I was born a nerd, man. I read mm, mm, uh, nonstop. Mm. Uh, I was one of those really serious bookworms. Wow. Uh, okay. I know in primary school, I had a goal to like read all the books in there. Wow. And I started this habit of it. At the end of every book I've read, I'd put like a little sign in pen at the back of the book so that I can be like, have mm. I read this before or not? Mm. Um, I think that helped because the schooling system is cram and regurgitate mm. more than anything. For sure. So that obviously helped a lot. I was a top 10 student throughout my schooling career. My matric yes. exam results at the end were probably my worst performance oh, okay. ever. I think I came out with two, three distinctions. Mm. Mm. Um, I was gutted and disappointed. Really? But for what I was going to study, it didn't really matter. Mm. And mm. for the scholarship I ended up getting, it also didn't matter. But considering what I was capable of academically, it was quite disappointing. And mm. I realized in retrospect, which is really good advice for kids out there mm. 
the kids that get the most A's, it's not necessarily the smartest. Yeah. It's the kids that do physicem, study and master, Pythagoras, do past papers, even at tertiary level. Mm. If you can do past papers, if you can get closer to the lecturer, teacher, learn how to spot what to ignore, you can easily get distinctions. And I didn't mm. do that. Mm. I was just mm. very comfortable. Look, I go to class, I've got a photographic memory and that's enough. So some kids, they go into their matric exams, obviously having done all the past papers, mm. which I never did. I never did physicem, Pythagoras, study and master in matric. Yeah. Um, but look, I passed with distinction. Uh, overall and with the 2-3 that I got. I say 2-3 because I think I got 79 for one. Mm. It's quite bleak about mm. that. Mm. Um, but yeah. Okay, so theory, the black pen came from when at the end of the books you would write your name in the black pen. Yeah, so I, I went to varsity. I was a creative is what, what I actually wanted to say. I think mm. I was a creative. I mm. loved art. I did music at school. Okay. I loved, I was a choir boy from mm. when I was very young. Mm. I wanted to go into advertising. I wanted to go to AAA or Vega. Okay. Um, but the prudent thing to do is go study a decent yeah, sure. course. So sure. I ended up in accounting. I wasn't going to do medicine. I didn't see the appeal in law. Mm. I never, ever considered engineering. Mm. These are the big ones that people speak about. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what an actuary was. So you're like, look, chartered accountancy. And I thought I'll just become a CA hmm. and then pocket and then go into the arts. Mm. Um, life obviously has its own plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did my accounting, I did my honors at UJ, but in that time, I started doing visual art, mm. painting, drawing, and I started selling my artworks. And I wrote my first book, or I released my first book yeah. in my honors year when I was at UJ. I started writing it in third year at Rhodes. Hmm. Um, and yeah, I needed a name that I thought would stick. I needed mm. a, because I was self-publishing. I wanted to right. do the, everything myself. And I was like, pen, I write in black pen, I draw in black pen. Mm. The black pen makes sense. And okay. It's a nice play on words. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, so for sure. A lot of people today tease me. They're like, I'm a sellout. You're the white pen. <laughs> I'm like, it's not really because I'm black that it's the black pen. It's mm. mostly because I write in black. Uh, I write in black ink. I draw in mm. black pen. Mm. And at some point I did, I made two mixtapes as well. So that was also my rap name. Wow. Yeah. How have we not done a song together? Like, no, it's coming. <laughs> people don't know. It's coming. Yes, we need yes. to. <laughs> yeah, people are going to be pleasantly shocked, I yeah. think, when we come through. Was it was it rap? It was rap. Wow. Okay. But um, we're lucky because we live in a more open-minded world mm. and we've got more role models that are diverse. Mm. Mm. So we can almost do anything Yeah, absolutely. Now. absolutely. So I'm looking forward to that. I just need to concentrate. Mm. Make some music. Music is a cheat. It's not like what we're doing now. This yeah. is work. Yeah. 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 Music is a cheat. If you get the right beat from a producer, if you get the right hook, mm. um, then you put this thing down three, four minutes, yeah. then people put on repeat. Yeah. Definitely. It's not like here, here you have to think and research and current affairs. Yeah. This is yeah. real work. People don't understand. Like, I think this YouTube thing is starting to boom now. We're seeing some massive channels, yours included, Gulu Lego's channel, obviously Mac G, and yeah. that's just in the stratosphere. Yeah. SMWX, you know, coming up. I've make, heard of them. I've heard make, of them. Mixtapes are dropping, dope. you know. We have our first platinum, you know, single, <laughs> JJ Tabane. Um, so, but people don't realize that to create that sense that, oh, we're just having a conversation, mm. it's actually a lot of strategy and a lot of work. Mm. And in some ways, I think people are still undermining YouTube and, and what we're doing. Like, mm. ah, it's just this digital stuff. And they haven't appreciated that actually what's going on here is quite important for the future of media. Not in, just in South Africa, but, but on the continent. Yeah. Must I speak to that? Please do. Because I guess what I'm getting at is I sometimes feel like people underestimate what's going on with these channels. Yeah. And kind of write them off as, ah, it's not serious. Um, do you feel that? Do you feel underestimated in the work that you're doing? Do you think people understand the scale of the numbers you do, for example? I'm not sure if, if I must give long answers or short answers. Feel free to give long answers. Like we, we tend not to... One of the things we can do, for example, is... Sure is allow people to expand, right? It's not TV where yeah. people are cut because there's an ad it's coming up. A commercial break. Um, so, so feel free to expand. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the work that we're doing, and mm. it's not just social and alternative media, media yeah. but all types of media and news and thought mm. content, mm. it takes a lot of work. Um, and now that I've gotten to understand the industry a bit better, mm. I realize there's almost like a, 
person who has a job for all the things that we do. Yeah. Why uh, naive, ignorant people would look at us and be like, oh, I want to start a vodcast because mm. I want to be, is they don't know that we've built ourselves into these people. We've integrated our normal life to suck intelligence and intel and analyze and debate and discuss. That's why it's almost natural for us. Whereas the next person has to first go read a few articles, mm. read some textbooks, reference. Mm. We study this stuff for fun. It's like if it's a lot of uh, sports fanatics. Yeah. They can tell you, no, but he scored three goals in that year. No, it was 1987. Mm -hmm. There are people that get paid for that, for that research. Yeah. So from a political or a business economical perspective, psychology, anthropology, whatever, we've been living that for years. Mm -hmm. And I guess for some people, it translates in how we come across. They're probably like, you probably read a lot. Mm. Like, I don't know, because I've been like this for a while. Mm. Mm. Um, there's important work that we're doing. And we're very thankful to the internet and social media that we now have a platform. Those of us who are nerds have gone and we've done the research and the reading into what is the most precious commodity on earth outside of time and natural resources and that's the human mind and what mainstream media did is they had the platforms to be able to control the human mind and get it to behave in a certain way and what social media and alternative platforms are allowing us to do is to challenge them we're literally yeah. the davids going against the goliaths mm. and the reason it is important and why some people don't understand is again mm. david and goliath once you understand psychology language story, manipulation, propaganda, you know that the media can run with the story for 10 years mm. and it can take one conversation, two minutes in how you structure it to get everyone to not agree with you, but to just question. Sure. Maybe they weren't right, mm. Mm. you know, kind of situation. So we have that. In terms of the scale that you're asking, radio you're supposed to pay your TV license, but radio is generally free in this country. Sure. People can listen to radio anywhere. TV for a lot of people is easily accessible. Mm. Of course, people are not paying their TV license, but it's there. We don't have cheap data. We don't have free Wi-Fi. So if we were to have that, you use an yeah. example like Mac G. And mm. if you look at his views uh, with the Sol Penduga, Ghost Lady, and the rest of the team, mm. Mm -hmm. If you were to take that and scale it based on affordability, yeah. if they're doing 400,000 views and it were to be free, mm. you could probably multiply that by like 20 mm. Mm. to give you a sense of the reach. This is yeah. kids that are either using uh, school, tertiary Wi-Fi or people using work or people that can afford. Sure. Imagine if we could get SAPC1, Mzansi Magic type mm. of platforms. Mm. But already the other part of it is not just we're yet to scale because of the cost of people gaining access to us. Yeah. Um, it's also the fact that people choose to come listen. Mm. It's not you switch on the radio like, oh, or you switch on SAPC or whatever. You're like, oh, mm. people have to literally go hunt for us, which means they intentionally want to mm. hear what we have to say. And those people are people that have a bit of money. Some of them are intelligent. Some are professionals. These are people that can influence. And if you've got a boss of a company, a politician, listening to us that means when they walk into their office into the educational institution they run they are going to be like guys there's this guy i heard sees mm. he was saying this mm. check him out and they literally getting to influence 50 100 people so mainstream media because they're scared of losing jobs and whatever they're still underestimating us yeah because i think they probably still don't understand and most of them think they're in the business of selling ad space mm. Mm. We're actually in the business of colonizing minds. Because once you colonize the minds, the minds will go wherever you want them. And where the minds are is where then the advertisers come. So over time, we will become as important as any cult leader, or <laughs> Bushiri and the guys, because Sizwe and Pofu Walsh becomes halal, kosher. And kids will be like, if Sizwe is not on it, or if he hasn't endorsed it, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't want to hear it. And that makes us, our voices at least, incredibly scary and if mainstream media is not having conversations with us mm. um, other people and <laughs> it's not going to be local people other international people are going to have conversations with us mm. and they will respect us because they will understand that we have the same impact and influence as a religious leader 
as someone that runs a very influential company because if we tell our, could be 20,000 followers who have a high LSM, who have money to spend, if we tell them, this is what we're thinking of doing, they will get their families, their friends, their everyone to move mm. in that direction. And I think about the 2024 election coming up mm. and I think maybe the elections in like the early 2010s were Facebook elections in many ways. Of course, you had SABC and all of mm. that, but you could see, oh no, the parties are now trying to influence here. Yeah. Other elections, I would say most recently, there were big Twitter elections in South Africa. Yeah. I think 2024 is going to be the first YouTube election. You reckon? I think so. I think it's it's growing at that rate where, I mean, if the political parties figure it out, because mm. they might not figure it out, but the influence that's going to be able to be shared on YouTube, I think is going to be just as important in, as any traditional yeah. platform. And the parties that can use YouTube to their advantage the best will see electoral rewards. And, and, and it's, it's going to be funny because there might be an interview with like 200,000 views on mm -hmm. your channel, right? But you might not see it if you don't know that it's there. Yeah. So you'll just see like, where did all that influence come from? Yeah. But it might be invisible to you because you're not plugged into that network. Yeah. So it's going, to be, it's going to be fascinating. But I think 2024 is going to be the time when people realize, whoa, this digital media content creation thing is actually a major player in the South African political landscape. Yeah. You're actually making me think, because when we spoke about scale, mm. a video you do might do 50,000 views. Yeah, yeah. But then people are going to take snippets mm. onto a TikTok, Facebook, mm. Instagram, so mm. it has more reach. Yeah. And as much as um, you might have one view, yeah. It could have been seven people mm. watching. Mm. WhatsApp where you don't even know. WhatsApp where people, people maybe take a, a, yeah, yeah. take a snippet and then share it. Mm. Mm. Um, if anyone is ever maybe even downloading the videos and then chopping them up and sharing them elsewhere. If yeah. someone in a lecture is like, Caesar was speaking to Penn and this is what they were discussing, mm. that mm. might show up as one view. Yeah, but yeah. Exactly. you look at that reach. So I definitely agree. I wanted to ask you mm. before I answer, Raf Tamsak. Yeah, yeah. From a YouTube perspective, mm. locally, mm. what percentage of votes do you think we can potentially influence by next year? It's just the thumb suck, of course. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard to say exactly that it would be YouTube because it would be difficult to know Let's just say social where it will come from. But it depends what happens. Like, for example, if a youth segment of the electorate yeah that is not voting right now decides to vote for mm. example that that can swing the election it could True. be one or two percent but it, it could swing the election True. um i would say one two percent really of, of an outcome yeah i i i think we could do five to ten wow realistically i mean look if if people actually because i don't know how many people care about the political side of, of yeah. I think you're someone who's brought that conversation in mm. and I've seen that gap as well as I have. I mean, if, if everyone was like, whoa, hold on, like there's going to be an election, mm. there's going to be a captive audience mm. and we are going to actually now not necessarily say we want to support this party or that party, but be like, this is going to be a platform where you have to sell yourself to the mm. voters. Could be, could be huge. We have a lot of, uh, it's called voter apathy. Mm. People that don't vote. Mm. Especially mm. young people. Mm. Um, I was on a platform, <laughs> JJ Dawani's platform on yeah. an ENCA. Mm. Mm. Um, it was myself, Mac G, Masha, David Mashabela, DJ mm. Spoon. I must tell you a story about JJ, by the way. Sure. Uh, on this theme after sure. this, yeah. yeah. So we sat there and one of the questions JJ brought up was politics. And mm. Mac G was like, ah, fuck politics. I'm not mm. going to vote. The youth mm. don't care. Mm. Yeah. And they were like, no. but And I'm like, no, Mac G is right. The youth don't care. Mm. Um, and he said it, he had said it before on podcast and chill that yeah. the youth don't care what the point, what's the point of voting if it's sure. going to be the same old shit, whatever. Sure, sure. Myself and TJ Spoo intentionally on the Hustlers Corner decided to start doing more political content because mm, mm. we understand the importance of yeah. political literacy and influencing the youth. Yeah. Got JJ Tabane, Andy Lemnitama, we had Herman Mashaba, mm. we had Aaron Sroots from Afri Forum. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to have more politicians come on, of mm, course, mm. specifically ANC. I couldn't make it on the day. I think I was sick. Panyaza Sufi came mm, through to mm, mm. sit with Usbu. Um, I'm not going to say we're taking credit, but I'd like to think from some of the chillers, 
they were like, but Magji, why don't you get some of these people to come Definitely. through? And all of a sudden, yeah. you start seeing a John Stianason, a Julius Malima mm. on podcast and chill. And now all of a sudden, yeah. kids are listening. You know, and as you said, podcast and chill is huge. And if yeah. Magji says, guys, don't forget to vote. Mm. We're going to party afterwards. But after, mm. but before we party, go vote. Mm. And we mm. want to check on the thing if you literally, sure. that could be a game changer. Mm. Um, some of us in various ways, if we can convert every week someone to vote, because mm. I know right now mm. the big thing is with me, yeah. my platforms, Ben, we hear you. Maybe we don't like the ANC because yeah, yeah. I'm frustrated with the ANC. Welcome to the club. Oh, are we the anti ANC? Uh, we're going to have about an hour of ANC ranting Jeez. after this, so don't worry. Yeah. So they're like, look, Pen, we agree with you. The ANC is problematic. We need change. Yeah, and they're sure. like, who must we vote yeah, for? Yeah. Because they're like, if you can't tell us who to vote for, we're not voting. Mm. But if you can give us a compelling argument, yeah. then, and what's going to happen with our platforms is between now and voting next year, mm. I'm inviting all the political parties, all of them. I don't Brilliant. care how arrogant they yeah, are. Sure, sure. I'd like to think the EFF is arrogant, which is kind of sad. Okay. And they're meant to be a youth party. Mm. Julius, I'm not sure about Floyd, Mbuisen and Rosie. They're part of the people that are undermining social media, I think, because they're like, mm. yeah, people follow us regardless. Why We're do you, a young party. Why do you think they're, they're arrogant? Have you had experiences or? They make it a mission to access them and to come on platforms mm. compared to uh, Herman Mashaba, Musi Maimani, yeah. John Stianazen. Um, the ANC guys we know are arrogant, mm. for example. You won't get a Cyril coming to church. You won't, they'll send some spokesperson mm. from somewhere, mm. which is part of the disrespect. But part of the disrespect is your LSM and your people are not really the people that vote for us. Mm. It's DA people and it's clever blacks. So we don't really need you. Mm. And mm. you, you probably want to bring us on to attack us and parade us. And mm. so we're not going to fall for your nonsense. So it might be something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But there are a lot of young people who really don't know and some don't care. Mm. And mm. I joke about it. But literally, if there's a political party that says, we already have a plan. We've already started. Yeah. Wherever you are, varsity, at home, ekasi, in an informal settlement, Call us. We will come and set up free Wi-Fi. Vote for us. Yeah. If you vote for us, we'll give you free Wi-Fi. You can watch whatever you want. Mm. Can make make money online, and and you'd be surprised how many people are like, look, in, fuck my vote. I don't mm. give give a mm. fuck. Mm. So this is the free Wi-Fi party. Yeah, I'll vote for them. Mm. And mm. all of a sudden, look, they may not get a seat in parliament. They may not, but to the influence, yeah, they might take a lot of votes away from whoever was expecting to corner certain constituency, for no, example. For sure. And I think that's also part of the importance of these digital platforms as they grow and, and their growth is exponential, mm. is setting the agenda for the election as well. Yeah. So it's not necessarily just about the swing in the vote, but it's about what are people talking about? Yeah. What debates are we having? What debates aren't we having? Mm. So if we said, for example, cool, every party is going to come on all these platforms yeah. in the election. The first question is going to be, how are you going to make data available to young sure. people? Like, then you set, you set the tone, you set yeah. the agenda, and the rest happens by itself. And that's, that's what we want, and that's yeah. what we need, and that's yeah. what our followers want, mm. uh, and that's what our followers need. And if these guys are not listening, mm. um, we may not have much of an influence now, but yeah. over time, yeah, yeah. Um, look, <laughs> South African politics largely is run by very wealthy people who fund the politicians. Sure. Some of us have access to some of those people and we have the ability to influence where they put their money. Some of you do, yes. Some of us do. We, we are yet to access. I don't know funds. who, but some of them <laughs> do. No, but honestly yeah, no, speaking, sure, sure. they listen to us because... Mm, mm, mm. They figured it out. Um, wealthy people generally are good at making money. Mm. And for most of them, that's all they're good at. Yeah, sure. <laughs> honestly. Mm. They don't know how to run human beings. They don't know mm. psychology. They don't know how to, they're not creative. Mm. Mm. That's why they need advisors. That's why they need teams. That's why they, so we become those advisors. You know, if you track a lot of billionaires, if you really deep dive, some of their best financial decisions, of course, someone whispered in their ear, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi are soccer players. They make hundreds of millions of whatever every year. They don't manage that money. Someone says, I'll be your financial manager. Once that money is there, someone else can be like, listen, we need to position and 
fund this person here in Spain, sure. this person here in Portugal. All of a sudden, mm. Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi are involved in Argentinian, Spanish, Portuguese politics. Mm. How? Because some of their money, because someone said somewhere that this will affect mm. football and the youth and so that they can travel easy. Just like yeah. that. But in there, we slip in something else and a certain party wins. We are that smart and they don't see us and they don't respect us and it's fine. Mm. Mm, mm. more than anything we genuinely care about building a first world country because we've also been able to travel and those things the one thing that they also aren't aware of when it comes to us is and I think this is probably going to happen closer to elections mm. and at least I'm speaking for myself mm. Mm. all the rest of the time and that's just one gimmick absolutely another gimmick and shout out to Mr. Beast in America one of the biggest YouTubers on the I planet wanted to, I wanted to talk about Mr. Beast as well at any given time we can get kids mm. chilling at varsity at an institution somewhere guys jump on a platform reach out to us download our content translate it let's dub yeah I'm chatting to Sizwe in uh it's Venda mm, in mm, Sesotho, mm. and you're like, all of a sudden, we do that reach that you thought we couldn't do. Mm, that's a great idea. All of a sudden, we're pirating DVDs on yeah. the streets. Yeah. All yeah. of a sudden, we're infiltrating text. Like, it's still early, and we don't have mm, money and reach. Mm, and, but mm, mm. we're thinking like that. And we're going to hit them from the back like technology did. Mm, mm, mm. Like, you know, WhatsApp has never been marketed in this country. Um, E-wallet mm. was never really marketed to Blob. Sure. M-Pesa wasn't marketed in East Africa. Mm. They tried it three times in South Africa in a corporate way and it never worked because you're not doing it yeah. the way it's meant to be done. Yeah. So we're watching and we're studying and the day we plug into Silicon Valley and Dubai and Hong Kong and London and we get the right ears there, mm. we're going to come eat them for breakfast and mm. if they're not listening to us now, it's going to be sad for them then because when they try and yeah. listen to us, we'll be like, unf not even pride and ego. We're not even sour. We're yeah. just saying, you're, you're just not a visionary for what we're trying to do. So we'd like to get rid of you. Yesterday's price will not be... Ah, it's price. really not the same like, anymore. So we can give you a job, <laughs> but, but uh, that's the best we can do for you. So they but, really need to respect us, man. Some, yeah. some of the politicians do. The last point I want to make before you speak about mm. JJ Daban and Mr. Mm. Beast is... Um, there's a, a documentary, I think, on Netflix. Um, something to do with data. I just forgot the name. The Great Hack, it mm. might be. Yeah, where they yeah. speak about sure, the power sure. of technology and social media and how, mm. for example, the Obama campaign didn't have as much money as whatever the Republicans yeah. were doing. But with the little bit they had, they positioned mm. on social media strategically and got people to vote differently. Mm. I don't even think our politicians are thinking of priming Facebook and the likes yeah. to only show certain content. Um, Action essay at yeah. the last municipal elections were all over Twitter. Mm. And I was like, someone here kind of has an understanding of something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And maybe they'll do that. I thought the EFF as a pro-young party would do something like that where mm. they they cool, they they have red berets and Amapiano mm. videos, mm. uh, where on podcasts we always talk about the EFF mm. and we were mm. I thought they were gonna be dope like that. And yeah. they were gonna infiltrate mainstream culture, the kid mm. that's doing trap and it's, it's going to be like yeah they wear red they're not eff but you're priming mm -hmm. in the and mm -hmm. they're not and it's yeah. sad and it's it's easy wins it's low-hanging fruit yeah yeah again those are some of the things we could advise on you know they must pay us sorry that's the last point i wanted to make <laughs> when the political parties pretend they care about us mm. and they want to come on podcast and chill the hustlers corner the virtual mkuku mm. smwx the panel show and uh, leg on culture and all the other platforms. Unpopular opinion, even though Nsigi Mazwa is not on it before. And we need more. Gigi Lamain's platform, I'm not sure what it's called. Okay. When they come, they must please pay us because we know how they work and, they, and we know they are funded for their marketing. Mm. So they must share some of that money with us and they mustn't fucking take us for clowns because we know, again, some of us have access to the people that fund them. Some of us have access to people that deal with marketing, mm. spend. Some of us know people that do data analytics and reach and we're not clowns and our content is going international where people don't watch SAPC mm. and DSTV um, our stuff is watched in the United States uh, AfriForum did a yo I'm speaking too much AfriForum did a documentary on white genocide your party huh your party my uh, 
my, gonna, my N, NPO we'll that does there. amazing work on the ground. Oh, yeah. Your apartheid party, yeah. Uh, they, they're not an apartheid <laughs> party, but we'll speak no, about we'll them get there, if we we'll get, get a chance. <laughs> they did a documentary uh, about farm murders, mm. which ended mm. up getting to America, which ended up getting Donald Trump on a platform to say he's seen what's happening in South mm. Africa. They must stop killing white farmers. And you're like, mm. what the fuck? Mm. 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 When you look at the data, at the time, I think it was 74 farm murders a year, mm. of which it didn't break racial demographics and it also didn't split between farm owner and farm worker sure so you realize the power of propaganda and mm, reach mm, mm. of which our Afri forum now has the united nations ear they've been taken in as something there they've they've been accredited as something there they have the voice mm. of the un so i'm saying we have that type of reach yeah if they're not listening to us like i say uh, and this is not me trying to be arrogant look we're we're relatively young gents who are just mm. trying to make a positive mm, impact mm, in the country yeah we're saying we want to be involved we're saying we can see you guys are here. We see some of you, what you've done even in the past. Mm. And we're saying just connect with us because we're actually trying to help you so that you can help the country. But yeah. if you're that arrogant, when D-Day comes and we have to pick a struggle, mm. we're going to say, cut these people off and you'll be cut off. And it will be a sad story, but we'll be like, we, we gave you enough mm. chances, mm. but you guys took us for clowns. No, no, for sure. Um, so, so much comes out of that and um i want to delve into it go for it the first is um oh so the jj thing yeah so the way jj came onto my show is we were at a a thing that was convened by former president Khalema Mutlante sure. in the drakensberg and fancy fancy i i saw him there right sure and i was like please come on the show i think he also interviewed you and he was like what's going on with youtube like yeah. I've been on TV for like five, six years. Yeah. And everywhere I go, people just say, oh, I saw you on the Hustlers Corner. Boom. I saw you on Mac G. I saw you there. Like, and no one says, I saw you on yeah, this TV, on TV channel or whatever. And he was like, there's something happening here. Like, let's, and then we organize the interview yeah. and stuff. That's cool. um, similarly, so that's in the South African space. Mr. Beast, mm -hmm. interesting YouTuber, someone who's, built a business model around YouTube content and digital content. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of talk about new billionaires coming from the content creation space. Yeah. So that digital content is kind of becoming what some people are calling the new oil. Like you have to be able to capture people's attention. If you know how to do that and you can scale it and you can do it quickly, yeah. then you're, you're going to print money over a long term, maybe mm -hmm. not now. Sure. So... For for those listening and thinking and interested about how to how to do that, you know, how did you go about uh, creating some of the the platforms you've created? The Penwell Show, you've got your own channel. Mm -hmm. You were a big part of Hustlers Corner, and take us through some of the strategizing that you did to make those those platforms catch people's attention and, and grow an audience. So I'll start with the last part. I I don't strategize anything. I don't think I'm that smart. And I don't think I'm that focused. Um, it's, the, it's the advantage of being a nerd from a long time ago. So something that maybe looks like it was thought out is, is not. Uh, so I just have to mm. confess that I don't plan a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, you covered JJ Dawan, are you happy? Yeah. You covered yeah. Mr. Beast, you happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I've had an interesting life. So from accounting, I worked for a mentor of mine in Joburg. I worked for two of the biggest banks in the country. Hmm. I was never meant to be a nine to five. Hmm. Like I said, I, I thought I was a creative and wanted to be in the arts. Hmm. Hmm. Later on, I wanted to get into business because I read Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And I realized if I can build a business that pays me passive income, I can then go and live my life in the arts. Sure. So I went into business, but I made the mistake of falling in love with business as well. Stayed there probably longer than I should have. Hmm. I had a fast food shop called Penel's Fish and Chips near Gandhi Square. Okay. I did um, truck trucking removals. Um, mm. I invested in a clothing business, in a food business. I became a loan shark, uh, which meant I funded a lot of tenderpreneurs and the like. <laughs> I met a lot of business people and entrepreneurs, which was pretty dope. And mm. if there were platforms like this back then, I would have had so much content. Mm. Um, and then somewhere along the line, look, my business crashed 2016, 17. And okay. normally when those things happen, you have like um, an epiphany moment or a moment of introspection where you're like, mm. 
Mm. What am I doing with my life? Is this who I want to be known mm. as and for? And it was like, no. So I spent like two, three years making money as a loan shark, chilling at home, watching a lot of YouTube. And luckily COVID lockdown came. Mm. And when it did, my life didn't change. Everyone's life came to a standstill. Um, and I was still making money, which was dope. Mm. But in the consumption of YouTube, I got obsessed with watching Joe Rogan. Okay. Um, he's one of my mentors in the space. And I was like, I'd like to have conversations for at least the next three to five years mm. and see what happens. If it can pay me, sh cool. Mm. If it doesn't, hopefully I'll find something along the way. Yeah. Um, and I, I started November, December, 2021. Hmm. And very soon my YouTube channel at the time, Penuel the Black Pen, went mm. from maybe three to 5,000 followers to maybe 10, 15. Mm. Because I started being consistent and, you know, yeah. And he'd said this to me before on Twitter, DJ Spool. Mm. In the business journey, I find Jewish businessmen do this the best. They are constantly studying the market for new talented kids and ideas. And they want to be the first movers. They want to be the first people to invest in SMWX. You know, um, the Indian Muslims in South Africa come second. The white Afrikaners are kind of comfortable with farming and mining and some of the more technical stuff. The black business guys, old money, taxis, funeral parlors, they're not even thinking of, let's do crypto, let's go on. They're not. So it's normally the Jewish guys. So Usbu, as an entrepreneur, as someone who also researches, he's got the same mm. mentality. That's why he wants to find and befriend the kids that are popping in Amapiano, the people that are popping on, on digital content creation, et cetera, et cetera. So he'd already seen me. And when I started doing work, he's like, come through for an... An interview on the Hustlers Corner. Okay, so that's how the Hustlers Corner. That's how the Hustlers Corner started. thing came. Wow. Okay. Um, so I visited once. He said, "Come back." I came back. Mm. The comments were like, "Bring him back again." I came back a third time, and it was like, "Wow." So put just, up a shack. So it was just like, was it just a message or a DM or like to come on the show? Yeah. So he had seen the stuff you were doing, and yeah. he noticed that. Wow. There's a there's a gent now. I need to send a shout out to him. Uzimasa Vabas. Mm. Uh, Mustafa on Instagram hey here's something interesting who's doing a lot of dope content so mm. if you do stuff like that <laughs> which is, is something we must never lose those little clips where he does I know, exactly yeah it's gone on TikTok like, as well brilliant huge, stats huge brilliant stats shout out to him yeah we mustn't make the mistake as we get older of mm. thinking we're too cool no absolutely um, in fact I, I must bring him on please yeah that's what's kept Snoop Dogg relevant. Yeah, yeah. Um, Zimasa, get in touch. I'm going to get in touch. No, you won't get in come touch. Through, I'll, come I'll bring him to Oh, me. okay. Yeah. Wow. I'll bring him to Here you. we go. Sorry, we did the panel show. You it's did it. Come ah, out later. You see now. I've actually got hey, a lot of interviews. Show is a problem. You know, it was so nice when I was just the only person doing political <sighs> interviews on YouTube. Am I chowing your... Like, and now every time, now you're just getting all yeah, these guests. Yeah, but Caesar didn't say... <laughs> That's pretty dope though. Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll bring him through. It's a no, must. that'd be good. That'd be good. Um, we mustn't make the mistake of losing touch with and be like, ah, oh, those kids are whack. Absolutely. We don't. Because those are the ones they probably know controlling more, the minds. No, they know, they know more than we do on a lot of these platforms. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was I even saying? So, oh, yeah. The Hustler's Corner. Yeah. So, Spoo invited me on. Mm. I became a permanent there. So, it was just an organic thing. You yeah. came on one more time and then you were there. Yeah. Interesting. And then Spoo wanted me to stay on. I stayed on. We grew the Hustler's Corner. Beginning of 2022, from about 40,000 massive subscribers to 150,000 yeah. or yeah. more yeah. by the end of the year. Um, we invited a whole lot of people. Yeah. Spoo created the Hustlers Corner for hustlers, mm. for entrepreneurs to tell their business stories. Mm. Mm. When I came, obviously, because I'm a fan of the mind, I was like, yeah. let's do politics stuff. And because people didn't know me, they don't know yeah. who I know and who I don't know. Yeah. So I brought in a lot of people that I know there. Uh, and what did what did he think about the political stuff? Like, how was he convinced that actually that was an interesting stream of content to go down? Was he sold at the beginning or did it take some? No, he was nervous at the beginning because yeah. Spoo is big on branding himself as a businessman mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a um, sustainable businessman who can see through different governments, mm -hmm. different political regimes, whatever, you want to be apolitical. Sure. That's why a Patrice will fund the ANC, the DA, and the EFF as an example. To be like, look, yes, I'm with the ANC, mm. but I'll give you guys money because I'm, I'm about making money. You know what I mean? So Spoo wants to be like that. Like, I don't want to be biased. Of which he was an ANC guy at some point. Mm. But he's like, look, 
I don't want to be an ANC seeker anymore. I just want to, you yeah. know. But he realized, look, some of this content and some of these conversations are important. Yeah. You know, bringing a Tutuzane Zuma on, bringing a Mandi Samashiko on, mm. um, it's dope content. And because we're not saying vote for these guys yeah, yeah. and because we're going for different political parties, mm. we don't have a side that we favor. Mm. A lot of the EFF followers are like, yeah, but you guys never bring EFF people. Yeah. This is where the arrogance come in. You DM guys, you try and speak to guys and we they will take you. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that we're mm. selectively, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. And even if some of us may not like the ANC, yeah. it's not because we're not inviting them. It's because some of them just don't want to come because maybe they don't think we have the reach yeah. or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. As we grow, of course, SMWX, the panel show, mm. they're mm. going to be begging us. Mm. But luckily, we're not arrogant. We'll let them come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but now. it's going to be kind of sad. <laughs> and you best believe on the platforms, I'm going to tell them, but you know, we tried, guys. Mm. You guys are the arrogant people that didn't, and they laugh it off. Nah, no. I've got I've got stories to tell too. Like, but but it's fine. It's fine. People will will realize in the end. Yeah. Take us behind the scenes on the Hustlers Corner, because I mean that's now a legendary YouTube channel. You've done some of the biggest interviews this country has seen with political figures, but also people in culture. But I'm always fascinated in what people don't see. So yeah. like we watched some of those interviews. Tell us what it was like. Like when did you realize, whoa, this thing is going big? Or just just give us a behind the scenes story that that people wouldn't have known. Um, like one of your most interesting experiences there. Again, you're assuming like we sit and we analyze these things. Mm. I think Spoo does. Mm. Spoo actually studies the analytics a lot. Yeah. I generally don't. Nkule was brilliant at no, studying brilliant. the analytics he, and those he things. He gave me such great advice for this channel. Sure. And I'm seeing it like take off as yeah. well. Shout yeah. out to Nkulego for Shout out to Nkulego. Free Go information, yeah. education, constantly. Nkulego and culture. Yeah. Also just opening space for, for many people. So shout out to Shout him. out to him. Yeah. Um, the Hustlers Corner. We'll yeah. speak about the panel show a bit later. Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Um, Subscribe because the Penwell show has more subscribers than F SMWX. Really? At this stage. And it's actually... Again, I don't study those, these it's things. It's actually embarrassing now. So please like subscribe now and can we just take it over because like... Oh, it's because the panel show is captured. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot so about that. So the white people that fund yeah. us are the ones that get us to okay, reach. Okay, yeah. Probably. Uh, all those subscribers are captured. So it's fine. These are real Yeah, it's subscribers. like fake, fake followers. <laughs> fake subscribers. <laughs> Afri Forum bought your 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 subscriber. Apparently, <laughs> geez, it's all the Afrikaans guys at Afri Forum that have grown the panel. I'm show. still gonna grill you on that. Don't worry, we're coming <laughs> back. No, no, no. But, but the like, behind the yeah. scenes at the Hustlers Corner, I have been a huge fan of DJ Spoo for the longest time. Mm. Um, I've been a huge fan of Uzola Seven for the longest time. Mm. I always said if I ever become famous in this country, mm. it has to be like Usbu no Zola. I want to mm. walk in the streets and be like, Hola, XA, XA, Spuda, XM, mm. Zolisto. Mm. 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 I don't ever want to be the type of popular person where I don't feel like people can come up sure. to me and chat to me. Sure. And so I've studied him a lot yeah. and I've studied his moves, business, otherwise. When I met him, one of the things I knew, because I knew he was a workaholic, I didn't know how bad it is. Mm. Spoo is, he's getting older now, he's in his 40s, but he's mm. those older guys who put 19 year old kids to shame. Hmm. He's a workaholic. The guy works. Mm. He lives for, he's got a meeting with Massive, then he's going to promote more fire. Then we shoot three episodes back to back mm. of The Hustlers Corner. Um, then he's wow. going to DJ and you see him going DJing live on Facebook. Then he's busy discussing cryptocurrencies. Mm. Then he's going to promote uh, property with Ekasi Noble and he's a workaholic, yeah. you know, uh, which is pretty dope. And Elon Musk is also, he's big on just work. Mm. Just put in the work. With that being said, because he's got a business mind and because of the Kasi Tembisa guy he is, he loves the concept of let's bootstrap mm. until we see that there's something special here. Yeah, sure. Then we can see where we can maybe get money from. So we've been bootstrapping the Hustlers Corner for the past year. Hmm. We actually haven't really invested in it, to be fully honest. It's crazy. We've had a crew mm. of between one and three people at mm. any given time. Mm. Mm. So you'll get one guy, Justice Shawalala, shout out to Justice, who come and record to the audio and then wow. go edit. It's amazing. And you think there's maybe people, yeah, it's yeah. just one guy. Wow. Phenomenal. Like I said, on other days, there might be another two, three guys, sure. but generally it's that. Mm. Spoo and I don't plan and like, hey dog, listen, let's sit down and strategize. Mm. Zero. There was a time where we're like, look, let's try and have topics. So on the <laughs> way to recording, yeah, yeah. he'll be like, hey, what was in the news? And yeah. I'll be like, okay, no, let's discuss the ANC. And he'll be like, oh, snap. Uh, 
Zex Bantuini and mm. Unum Tebo and uh, Voter have mm. just won a Grammy Award. Mm-hmm. So let's chat about that. Yeah. Or something tragic has happened or something's happened in sports. Mm. A lot of it is very spontaneous. Yeah. It's one of my fears with vodcasting and social media mm. that sooner rather than later, we're going to lose that. Absolutely. That, that, that just conversational. Yeah. Like, and it's so funny to me because a lot of people in the media, uh, traditional media, will be to me like, firstly, why don't you interrupt people more? Yeah. And secondly, like, why don't you inject your opinion more? And I'm like, you haven't figured out the platform yet. It's not about doing it like it's on TV. Yes. If you sit down with a TV exec, they'll be like, hey, give the person one minute to speak and jump in because we want to see that, you know, people Robust fighting and all of that. engagement. Exactly. And- now tell them why they're wrong and all of that. And I'm like, oh, Piers Morgan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sure, there's a there's a place for that. Yeah. But to differentiate from that world, you have to create something that's truly different, which is a real conversation, which is not edited, which is how would that conversation between those two people flow? Yeah. And I think that's what my audience appreciates, which people also haven't figured out, is it's like it's not supposed to be a TV interview. It's not supposed it's a to a different kind of thing. Sometimes yeah. we go there, then we come here. And then we go there again yeah. because that's how conversations work. Yeah. And it's a recorded conversation. Yeah. Which is pretty dope. I, yeah. I'm scared of us losing that. Mm. Mm. Look, part of it, it's the reason why in the music industry and sometimes in sports, young kids come and they, they bash the old, old cats because mm. you've become too commercial. You're worried about your family. You're worried about brands and the yeah. kids don't fucking care. Mm. Little Dirk and... All these other kids, they don't care because they, they're not there yet. They're not yeah. thinking endorsements and how will this affect my... They're like, fuck it. We're going to shoot them up. And you're like, you yeah. can't stop it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, but look, there's, there's, a, there's a place for that. Yeah. And there's going to be a place for... Again, man, shout out to Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan came in and he didn't monetize his YouTube channel, which was odd because mm. of his views. And secondly, he did something that everyone was like, it doesn't work. Everyone's yeah. got a short attention span. Exactly. No one will listen to an hour conversation. Yeah. And Joe Rogan will go for three hours. Mm, mm, mm. And the way he recorded it was fly on the wall. Yeah. We don't know that there's cameras here. Yeah, yeah. We don't know there's a mic here. It's me and you. Mm. And you're like, and when that chick came through, dog, what was that? So it's part of the appeal with Mac G. Mm. Until people realize you get in trouble. Mm. Because people are actually watching and people can actually cancel you. And, and it was like, so you fucked the dog? And you're like, hey, dog, I... You can't say that because people are actually watching. But... Without the controversy, Joe Rogan literally got people to just have conversations and I didn't want to lose that. So now if we start structuring, we're like, which angle are we going for? It's like, mm. fuck the angle. Mm. When you heard the State of the Nation address, yeah. what did you think? You're like, the EFF is going to disrupt. Oh, it's Cyril. For some reason, they don't disrupt him because maybe he, he's funded them or maybe what was the issue with Zuma or mm. whatever the case may be. And like, be honest, because yeah. they are kids. That are like, but that's exactly what I fucking thought. And there's no mm. platform that is mm. saying this. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, you don't have to be alternative. You can say whatever mainstream media is yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. But it must be your opinion and it must be authentic. Sure. And people sure. must know that, oh, okay. Okay, maybe if Caesar says it, then maybe mm. it's right. Because I, mm. I trust Caesar. Mm. I trust him more than these guys because I know they have a script mm. and it has to be okayed and, and, and. Yeah. Caesar's yeah. saying it because on the other day, he was like, nah, fuck that guy. You're like, okay. Mm. I think I believe him. Otherwise... So the Hustlers Corner was that mm. behind the scenes. And we don't know where it's going yet. And Spoo, like me, luckily we, we have a deep understanding of business and longevity. And I think because of business, because I've been burnt, he's been burnt. Yeah. And we've studied the game locally, internationally. We're very comfortable to bootstrap, not make any money, mm. struggle and, and, and just see what we're dealing with. Yeah. And then learn from other people and come back and, and try those things. Um, there could be some deals that are interesting now where you are, but in one year you could be at 10x where you are views wise yeah. and, and that wouldn't make sense. So it's a patience game as well. We've had to turn down sponsorships and investors um, because we don't know. Mm. You watch uh, The Social Network, the movie about Facebook mm. Mm. Um, and Mark Zuckerberg, Eduardo Severin in the story were trying to discuss, let's sell ads, let's, and Mark is like, not yet. Because we don't know what we're dealing with yet. It's cool. It's a cool mm. platform. It's mm. a cool thing. Like, do we really want to fuck it up with ads mm. and mm. sign up to this and subscribe? Like, people are here because it's cool. Mm. And look, Joe Rogan has proven it as well because without ads, without anything, Spotify came and gave him, initially, we thought it was 100 million, then 200 million US dollars. Mm. 
And we don't know if Africa will ever get to that mm. kind of reach mm -hmm. or type of deals, but, and we're not doing it for money, or at least I'm not. Sure, sure. But it's maybe something really dope would happen. Yeah. And yeah. if, and this is why the panel show cannot be captured, at least yet, if someone comes in with an agenda, I can no longer speak. And I'm a minimalist. I have my own religion. I'm like a mini cult figure. So I don't need the money and I don't want someone because like I said earlier, I know the business we're in. And it's not a money business and it's not an ad sales business. It's a business of colonizing and influencing minds. And we've got a unique um, position to create the new version of halal kosher Christianity Buddhism. And why would we fuck that up by taking something that's already been there. Mm. If these guys and their billions were so dope, they would have done it before, but they couldn't. We can. So I might have 10,000 subscribers. I might not have a big reach, but I don't want you to come and fucking tell me what to do mm. because you're going to fuck up what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. Let me scale this thing. Look, let's remain friends and here and there, maybe I'll mention your name. Mm. Maybe we'll do some cool stuff together, mm. but don't come and tell me I didn't like that episode. I'm like, oh, that's tough for you because mm. other people liked it. And you need to get to the program. And if you don't like me, that's fine. But this is me. Mm. I'll help you make a bit of money, but that's as far as I can go. Yeah. But you're not going to dictate to me because these are my followers. These are my people. And I don't want to lose them to you. Mm. That's bullshit. Mm. So it's that for now. We're still bootstrapping. The Penwell show is different, yeah. but on the Hustlers Corner, we're still bootstrapping for now. No, for sure. I mean, I know the Penwell show is captured, so we won't even... Oh, the like, Penwell yeah. show's got money for days. What, what happened, like, so what happened there? What, there was some controversy where people said it was captured. Is, it, is that true? I'm worried about making a sound bite that's going to sound like hate. Hmm. Uh, let me make it, because we're being authentic, I guess. <laughs> Um, this is how I strategize I think for five seconds yeah, look for, say, say whatever you want to say I, mean. um, I worked with Spoo on the Hustlers Corner mm. I'd been making content before shout out to Spoo for putting me on because of his brand which is pretty huge uh, and the platform you know now people associate me with Spoo yeah. a lot of people know me my own channel got to grow Penuel the Black Pen it's almost on 40,000 subscribers now mm. um Sbu invites MacG and Sol onto the platform for an interview. Mm. And Sol, Black Pen! Oh, Sol is so loud. Black Pen, what's up, Mike? I'm like, yes, sir, you're so loud. <laughs> Sol is like, I've been watching your content, dog, before I used to read your Facebook posts. I'm like, that's, mm. fuck, I didn't know that. Kulego said the same thing. It's like, mm. before people knew you, I used to fuck with your content. I'm like, thanks, bro. Because yeah. people think I just arrived last yeah, year with yeah. Sbu. Yeah. MacG is like, I'd never heard of you. Uh, I first saw you on DJ Spoo. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Story goes, uh, DJ Spoo and MacG were meant to start podcast and chill together. Mm. Uh, oh. MacG didn't show up to the interview or the conversation they were meant to have wow. about how they're gonna... So, Spoo mentions it on the Hustlers Corner when we chat. Mm. Ah, you and I were meant to do podcast and chill. Mm. And MacG, mm. honest as he is, and that's why people love him, was like, yeah. hey, dog. I was like, DJ Spoo, this guy's a big brand gonna swallow me hmm. so i thought nah and when he said that i was like for real wow for fucking real um it's what made me nervous as well mm -hmm. i didn't want to be dj Spoo's protege or not to ask Spoo. Sure. not because i don't like Spoo. i love Spoo. that's why i enjoy working with him mm -hmm. it's because i'm my own person and i don't want when yeah. i'm like i don't think energy drinks are good for you the caffeine they're like oh hey, it's my jay more fire <laughs> And you're like, no, fuck you guys. Like, I love Spoo and I love mm. what he's doing, but mm. I am myself mm. and I should be able to say whatever I want. Um, that was actually part of the reason why I fast-tracked the panel show because the panel show was meant to happen three years ago, mm. by the way. But I fast-tracked it because I wanted my own platform mm. where mm. I'm not working with Spoo. And very, very soon people realize, hey, I don't think Spoo is involved here. And I think that's a separate thing, mm. you know. Um, but anyways, so because of that, uh, Mac G sold. They were like, oh, you should come to Podcast and Chill. I was like, sure, that would be great. Mm, mm. I went to Podcast and Chill. And yeah. of course, because their reach is crazy, yeah. I grew in terms of subscribers mm. and whatever. People that had never heard of me before. I was supposed to go and then they canceled it at the last minute. I don't know why, but that's another story. Hopefully, they'll bring it back. Yeah. I know yeah, the one we'll thing see. now is they very much in demand. And I think yeah. they have the type of reach now where they can actually release an episode every day. Hmm. Um, of just Mac G and Soul. Yeah. And if they're going to have a guest, that would be huge. they can go every day 
and bring in a guest at any given time. Mm, true. They have that type of reach. Um, yeah. I think it's one of the things Bo and I have gotten right of mm. saying, can we do views without a guest? Because once yeah. you do that, exactly, it's gold. And you start, then you don't yeah, need yeah. A, anyone to come no, to. No, exactly. And you start realizing that your audience will come because of what you're doing. 100%. Guest, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I didn't want to, again, mm. the panel show, I yeah. wanted to create a platform where it's not, ah, it's because of DJ Spoo. Sure, People are watching sure, this because sure. it's like, Spoo's huge. Mm. I'm not Spoo. And sooner rather than later, I need to build my own brand so that people can be like, oh, okay. Yeah. The panel show, shit. This guy. Mm. Um, Mac G and Saul invite me. I come through. Views, etc. cetera. Um, I do the panel show soon thereafter. Mm. Myself and my business partner there, Tibo Kibine, we've been mates for years. Mm. He runs a... Does Debs want me to speak about this? I won't mention the company. So he runs a production mm. company which mm. does some amazing work on TV. Young, black, all the things people celebrate. Sure. It's not white owned. It's not owned by old people. Mm. Young, black, gent, production company. Mm. Because of his production company, he's like, my man, we've got cameras. Let's shoot. Last 2021, we did a video with the uh, riots and the looting. Yeah. Um, one of that, those videos went viral. Mm. Because me and him were just having chats. We we're experimenting. This sure. was before I met Smu, before anything. Mm. We did three, four. But then his production work got the better of him. Yeah. As I was doing work, he's like, fuck dog, this should have been us. Please come through. Mm. And the month they moved into a new premises, he was like, I'm ready. There's a room for you. Yeah. Let's paint it. Let's... So we hit. Mm. Um, and luckily, we did good views. Yeah. Part of it was the leverage from the Hustlers Corner. Interesting. Part of it was the leverage from Podcast and Chill. Mm. I can't pretend that it's just me, mm. you know. But they've got dope cameras, yeah. a yeah. dope set. They've got a dope team. Mm. So after Podcast and Chill, the panel show, mm. this is now the soundbite. Then Mac G goes and fucking hates. Chilling there with Saul. Hey, my dog, have you seen the panel show? Fuck, obviously he's captured. You've seen the quality of that thing, my man. Because in his head, he's thinking, we know how long it's taken podcast and chill to get to this level mm. where we're known and we're big and we can afford equipment. But even with what we have mm. and what we make, we fucking can't afford that. And soon thereafter, I managed to get them two or three interviews of which one of them was Rob Hersoff, who had become okay. a mate. And Rob Hersoff became a mate because, fuck, I make videos on my phone. My mm. channel's got close to 40,000 yeah. subscribers filming with my phone mm. inside the flat I stay. Yeah. So I was at a family farm in the Val, in Tadir. Um, I just watched the video of Rob Hersoff slashing the ANC, calling off Elam Balula, idiots. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I laughed. I was like, this is refreshing. Uh, benefic uh, beneficiary, third generation, I think wealth. Yeah. The Hersoff family, Anglo Fall Mining, Avenge, AVI Industries, mm. and off the cuff. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, this is so dope. Yeah. So I made a video. I was going to do charity work there. Okay. Make a video. I'm like, fuck, I was watching this guy, Rob Hersoff. Mm. He's not on social media or he's just gotten on now. Oh, okay. So again, international reach. Mm. Some of his business associates, New Zealand, Canada, sent that to him. Mm. And his people reached out to me and they were like, mm. Rob would like to meet you. Can we... Can we get your number? I was like, sure. Wow. Met up with Rob. Uh, we had chats. We had laughs. We debated capitalism. I told him capitalism was a pile of shit. Uh, he was like, yeah, but things. I'm like, yeah, but you white people can't say these things. But mm. I liked him. He liked me. Mm. He comes from the boy school mentality where mm. we swear like pirates. Your school's fucking dog shit. And yeah, but we fucking beat you last year. <laughs> and I'd like to think he took a liking to me mm. authentically. Mm. Mm. Some people think he maybe sees me as a potential long-term investment, a future Musi Maimani or Herman. That could be him and his agenda, and I don't know. And currently, I don't really care. Yeah, I'm enjoying him as a mate, and I'm enjoying that. Again, when we speak, when I speak about Jewish business people, any black person who's a billionaire or who comes from a billionaire family mm. could at any time reach out to us, and they're not. They're not saying I like your work come through and you're like, I think Patrice is trying to capture me. But it's like, whether he is or not, it doesn't mm. matter. The fact is he's extended a hand. Mm. We're mm. seeing the work you're doing. Sure. Come watch a Sundowns game with us. Rob is doing that. Other white Indian Muslim and other race people do that. 
Wealthy black people are fucking not. Uh, shout out to my mate, Kulufelo Maponya from the Maponya family. So he's done that because he also understands that value. Mm. Other people don't. Yeah. Tomorrow when they pass away, because this is what happens. Their 50 buses disappear. Their 200 taxis disappear. Their cattle business falls to shit because their kids fucking snort coke and go to these fancy schools where they learn fuck all because they trust fund babies. And then we, middle class, my mom was a single mom teacher. We mm. eat them for breakfast because mm. we have the same hunger that their parents had. But if their parents had invested in us, we would have become their, I think this term is a consigliere mm. in uh, The mm. Godfather. Mm. We could have become the right-hand man to their sons where we go to the same school. Yes, I snort coke, but I've got this guy, Penn, who's fucking sober, who tells me, dog, don't fucking snort your father's business away. Let's invest some money here. Let's do this there. Fuck, dog. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we groom my son to help his kids and maybe our children marry each other, whatever, to try and... Yeah. That's how it's fucking done when you study it. Anyways, <laughs> going on a tangent. So Rob reached out. I like Rob. Mm. He's a mate. Hey, Penn. Mm. Like, hey, what's mm. up, Rob? <laughs> um, so you used your you used your boys' school. I didn't go to a boys' yeah, school, but yeah. rugby. Me, for mm. me, it's rugby. Yeah, rugby yeah. got me into the boys' school culture. Mm. Um, and then so Rob reached yeah. out to me. We met. Um, I had a sit down with Rob in Cape Town. Mm. That interview did well on my channel. Um, I'd met Gaten McKenzie because he wanted to hire me when he was at Ravonia on deck. Okay, I wasn't ready to work for him then. I just wanted him to mentor me. He mm. went into politics. Um, He's doing amazing work in the Karoo, I'd mm -hmm. like to think, with Patriotic Alliance. Did an interview at Gayton. I was like, when you're in Joburg, please come through. Rob came to visit his parents in Joburg. He was like, I'm fucking there. Penal mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. We hit, does good views. After that, um, I'm like, go to podcast and chill because yeah. people need to hear the other side. People are always like, white monopoly capital and these fucking rich whites. Mm -hmm. I'm like, not a lot of wealthy, rich white, not a lot of wealthy white people are willing to talk and you yeah. are. Yeah. You may not be their voice, sure. but you're just a voice. Mm. When we get Johan Rupert or his son to come through, that will be another voice. When we get Nikki Oppenheimer's boy, not sure of his name, come through, Yanni Muton's son. You know, some people may not understand why some of us move the way we move, but mm. in the spirit of Nelson Mandela, we're trying to build a, an important or an amazing country. And part of it means speaking to the stakeholders mm. that actually have real influence. You know, so, someone said to me, I won't say who it was, but the problem is all the people in the middle right now in South Africa. So you have like really rich people yeah. who have realized that the ANC is not a good investment yeah. right? and are also livid. And then you've got young, energetic black people talented, maybe no access to the resources that that group has. But then you've got this whole group of caters, politicians, people who wield political power in the middle, who like act as a buffer between those two groups. 100%. And they were saying, if we wanted to change the country, we would just cut out all that middle stuff and get these two groups of people who have a lot, you know, that's not in common, yeah. who disagree fundamentally with each other sure. on, on a whole host of issues. But if those two groups of people could, could actually talk, then something interesting Fuck. might actually come out of it. You have the talent, I have the resources. And Rob and, Herself yeah, has yeah. said that on the panel show. It's something that people always ask mm. me about and I fucking mm. got a lot of DMs. Connect me with Rob. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we need to create a platform or we yeah. have a platform. I just need to make time for it, mm. for mentorship. Mm. Johan Rupert, mm. before he got pissed off and told South Africa to go jump, was with Given Mkari, literally extending a hand. Said, Given... You can get talented young black people in a room. Mm. I will get my rich white friends to pull through mm. and let's find common ground. But then South Africans went and slashed him and whatever. And Johan Rupert, yeah, Johan Rupert throws tantrums. He was like, ah, fuck it. Mm. And I'd like to think a big, he's divesting a lot in South Africa, which is pretty sad for us. We won't realize it till later un unless the political landscape changes, mm. which Cyril hasn't done a good job of. Rob comes on anyways, so yeah, I, I yeah. get him to podcast and chill. Mm. Uh, so he does an interview there because I thought it would be pretty dope. Sure. All of a sudden, I was there. I was meant to be going to do other work, but I'm there. Rob was like, come through because, you know, I'm meeting on MacG and you mm. connected us. Mm. So I'm there. I'm there for a part of the interview, but Rob is like, oh, my mate Penn is here. So it's like, ah. Mm. So Penwell is now this puppet of these white guys. So right. we get these white guys on platforms to influence young black people to... Mm. 
I get the interview for Omeg G. Sure. There's another one or two. Hopefully, they're still coming. Um, but then Mac G goes and says, Pinnell's obviously captured and what, what. And I'm like, either Mac G is reckless and clearly he doesn't know what he's doing or the inf- impact of what he's saying, you know, because he could say it. That's the nice thing about him. He says whatever he feels. Sure, but sure. there's a real influence out there where mm. people really believe. Because mm. Mac G said it must be real. Mm. That celebrity chick definitely slipped away to the top because Mac G said it. And you're like, Mac G was just saying whatever a young guy would think, but he's got that type of influence. So I made a video where I was like, look, it's not the case. As I've said with my business mm, partner, mm, mm. you're almost bashing black excellence in that conversation just because you saw me with one white gent. You've seen me with DJ Spoo. You've seen me with Tutuzani Zuma. You've seen me with, let's say, anyone who knows people from the Maponya family. You've seen... At no point in your inferior mind did you ever say, oh, he's been captured by DJ Spoo. If DJ Spoo had been, phew, I'm going to use a racist person as an example. If he had been Steve Hoffmeyer, celebrity, he's been in the industry for long, he's become successful, and he's like, yeah, man, come and all, come on, do a fucking podcast. <laughs> and I'm there, fuck Steve, he's a racist, whatever. And that would be the episodes. wildest podcast. In it would be too dope. History. I'd love to interview Please Steve. don't do that. Please don't do that. No, I have to <laughs> interview Steve or someone there. <laughs> you see now. So you're going to do a podcast with Steve Hoffman? No, it's, I'm it's, not. It's official. It's been announced here on SMW. Come on. This is where people... Um, <laughs> you, look, Mac G, and Steve If Hoffman. Steve Hoffman had done what DJ Spoo did, mm. I would have been accused of being captured and selling out. Mm. Mm. But because the masses suffer from an inferiority complex, yeah. when black people call me and work with me, I'm not captured. Mm. When one white person does it, all of a sudden, mm. I'm captured. And that's some of the very important psychological work that I know I need to do. Mm. Because that work is the work that keeps parties like the ANC in power. Because at any given time, they just press a button. Mm. Then everyone laughs. Hey, and, and, yeah. and then a MACG goes and says, oh, they captured. Then everyone laughs. Oh, MACG said it. So then you lose out and... If ever Mac G was, had sinister ambitions, if the ANC has sinister ambitions, all of a sudden I've lost those people. Whereas I could have actually done really good work. And to what you're mm, saying, mm. I can get people, put them in spaces with people with resources. Sure. You're part of Afri Forum, they and Solidarity have built Soltech skills institution. You've got young black kids who need jobs and they don't have skills. And you're like, let's put them in Soltech. Do they need to study in Afrikaans? Maybe. Can we maybe convince Soltech to do a little bit of English, maybe over time? You're taking black kids, put them in, putting them in this thing, which your government has failed to build. But now because of this fucked up mentality you have, you've said your FET colleges are gone. You've said you don't have skills. And I'm like, guys, ah, but you sold us out. Okay, then fucking go hungry. Go die of fucking hunger. Because I'm actually the person trying to help you. But because of that mindset, you've not just lost potentially Rob Hersoff and whoever, whichever rich people he knows. You've also lost me, a passionate young person who in the middle is trying to connect both sides. You fucked it up. I, like people I won't mention, I will move to San Francisco and I'll move to Dubai. And you'll be talking about me like, hey, open well, it's a bit of a don't want Trevor Noah. And I'm making euros, dollars, and I don't give a flying fuck about what's happening in your country. Because like Johan Rupert, when I tried you guys said, fuck you, and you decided to listen to your piano and get drunk and speak about farms. <laughs> fuck you then. Maybe you deserve the, the shitty life that you're in. So anyways, that was, that was me and Rob and then the panel yeah. show and Mac G. No, thank you for clearing that up. I love, I love you, Mac G. Um, I didn't even know it came from there, um, but interesting. Um, bro. I actually brought you here to talk about politics. We're discussing <laughs> the politics of the panel show and the hustler's uh, corner and yeah, such things. Exactly. Come on. But like we said, these, these are conversations and I have like a thousand things that I'd like to, like you said at the end of your interview as well. So we must do a round two of both of those. What you need to do, sorry, Cesar, before mm-hmm. you carry on, is you need to shut me up. Please don't let me go. Mm, that, that's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Please, yeah. please just, if I start, just get in. I'll stop. Well, I'd like I'm giving you, to, you permission. Well, I'm giving him consent, guys, no, but this, on camera. But this is your opportunity to talk about President Cyril Ramaphosa. 
and where we are right now. He's about, as we film this, to give a State of the Nation address to talk yeah. to the nation when we're in the midst of probably the worst crisis of electricity and other services in, in democratic history. What are your thoughts on the Ramaphosa administration and uh, President Ramaphosa as he gears up to deliver this big, important speech? You still watch that guy's videos and speeches? To be honest, no, I don't. Uh, but I guess we have many, to. I guess apparently it's a big thing. I, I don't know if it is any, like, should it even happen at this point? Like when the country is where it is. I've come up um, with a nickname for so like, call him uh, And uh, look, we all have a fat laugh. And then people are like, ah, oh, why are you? And it's like, look, he's got a odd shaped nose and um, or a big nose rather. Um, and people will say it's whatever. And I'm like, look, if he was tall or if he was short or if he was very pale or if he had big hands, was like we'd point out that Barack Obama's got big ears. He jokes about them. If we can't laugh and joke about those things, I mean, we used to speak about Batanat as an example. So why is he exempt from... Anyways, I call him Umakhalin, Babuin, Uramaposa, Cyril Maposa. Um, I don't like Cyril, man. Hmm. For many reasons. But let me add this disclaimer. I think Cyril has done very well for himself. I think he's done very well for his family. I think he's done very well for his extended family, including his in-laws. I'd like to think he's done very well for his business associates. From about eight days to when he came in, to when he chaired the BE commission, to even now what he's doing as president. So to his true stakeholders... I think he's doing phenomenally well. Hmm. And we've learned, luckily, relatively soon, that when he said to Mamina, he wasn't speaking to all of us. We were like, oh, okay, <laughs> no. He's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't like Cyril as a leader for this country. And I don't like Cyril as a leader for the masses of black people. And sadly, Seoul has even proven that he's not a great leader for our economy. Like I said, he's a brilliant leader for his stakeholders. But it's either him or his stakeholders or both are very short-sighted. And they are making the rookie mistake of, I am Christo Visa. I own ShopRite and Pepco and Breit and all these other companies. And I'm milking everyone. ShopRite, I still think, sells the cheapest loaf of bread for $4.99. Pep sells affordable stuff. Because Christo Visa and whoever his people are understand that if we milk a cow just enough for us to drink milk, mm. we can milk it forever. And it can feed its calves so that we can milk the calves. What Seoul and his stakeholders seem to not understand is if you milk this cow till it bleeds, it'll get infected, it'll die, it won't be able to feed its calves, and tomorrow we will have no cow and no fucking milk. So you have to build an economy that feeds everyone. And what that means is you have to let go of something. You have to let go of something. You have to share some of the shit mm. with people that you may not really like. It's one of the things I hate about new money, especially these young black tenderpreneurs. No one is sitting and saying, guys, it's happened with soccer players, with DJs, uh, some celebrities, actors, etc. Mm. No one says, you've just popped. Come sit with me and let me explain to you how you must move. Mm, mm. So that when you're 35 and you can no longer play for Bafana, you're not going to be broke in fucking six months. Um, no one is sitting tenderpreneurs and saying, this is how you must budget. Yes, you're going to chow 10 million from a tender. But 2 million, or let's say 1 million of us must go into PR. So how do we make you look good so that you're protected and the community can tomorrow be like, don't touch our guy. That's our guy. He feeds us. Mm. Take some of this money and maybe do some sustainable charity. Take some of this money and build a legacy. Invest in a school, add a certain wing. This is what wealthy people, generational wealth has done. And some of it is for tax avoidance, which is legal. Some of it is for tax avoidance. Some of it gains you access to certain seats you would not have otherwise. You literally yeah. school these people on how to move better so that of this 10 million, you can only chow 2 million sucks you want to chow 10 mm. but you can now chow 2 million moving forward instead of 10 million now and then you never have a contract again so i think that's what cyril is doing under his administration and again i don't know if it's him or his associates but mm. and i don't even know if it's intentional 
let's destroy, just destroy the country so that we have a legit reason to overhaul. Because that also happens if you study politics and history, that Cyril was sent to destroy the ANC because there's no way they can run the economy the way they want with this type of ANC. And if he does empower the masses, and the ANC learned this lesson the hard way, if you empower young black kids, they grow up to vote DA. So maybe let's keep them miseducated because they become too smart and they keep them kind of stupid. Mm. You know, so let's not empower them. If we want to live like kings and be their bosses and dominate them, and if you look at how the world is moving, we need to build welfare yeah. states. So I don't like Cyril, man. I, I, I don't even know if he likes himself. I stopped watching his family meetings because there was a lot of bullshit there. Mm. Um, the ANC as a whole triggers me, especially people like Phil and Balula, Peggy Kele, and other people that bullshit us on platforms. They bullshit, look, they bullshit us because we can see through the bullshit. But obviously they convince the masses mm. and mm. they do a stellar job for their funders. But it's upsetting because they, they you said I could swear here. Bro, you've been swearing for like the whole hour. Now you, but now you are. Swear words have levels. <laughs> this one I'm about to is the one where your mom is like, okay, no, don't, 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 don't say that one. Oh, I mustn't say that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, they, they. Oh, I said it earlier, but I used clowns. They take us for clowns. Mm. I think that's more politically correct. They take us for clowns, and it's, it's triggering considering where we mm. come from as a nation, mm. Mm. where we come from as Black African people, and the immense potential we have to actually become a beacon for the continent mm. and maybe even for the world. Yeah. I've said this before, before you, you cut me off, because I said you must cut me off. There are many white people in this country, specifically white Afrikaners, who are not aware that they are mentally colonized. And it takes a Nelson Mandela, it takes a Siam Tanda Kolisi, it might take someone like me to sit with them and talk, where they're like, you're not like the others. And I'm like, there's actually a lot of us. And it's just because you were told a different story because your leaders need you to hate us so that they have power. Whereas actually we're kind of the same. So the rest of the world and their rubbish capitalism they have, they may not be aware of it, but they actually need us to rise to save them from themselves. And if you've got rubbish leaders like a Cyril, you're taking us back because right now we've gone from apartheid and colonization where we had shit jobs and we were exploited to now where we can't even work and we're glorified beggars. A person sees government as God. What will we eat? INC must give me a home. And during apartheid, we still had some level of dignity. White Afrikaners oppressed us and they exploited us and they committed atrocities, but we had some level of dignity. Now there's zero. You see people queuing to be fed like children. Is a social grant recipient. And he's not worth men, grown men with hands and arms and legs standing at a street corner begging, Mlungu, please hire me for peanuts. We've gone backwards. It's fucking pathetic. So his administration, look, we're not going to isolate it to him. If you look at the ANC, and I don't want to protect other people. I'll just say them as a whole. They've really taken this country backwards. Um, not just black people, but everyone. To be continued, bro. Um, we'll speak about the state of the nation. Our cameras are literally... If, if it happens, because the EFF might not let it happen. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, our cameras are literally collapsing because we're not captured like you. So, oh, shit. Snap, sorry. So we have I'll to... I'll speak to my mates. I'll ask Rob. Yeah. To round up his band of merry rich. Hey, please, we've been waiting. I'm kidding. Uh, so all the people in the comments who want us to carry on, we'll, we'll, we'll get you back. Thank you very much for joining us on SMWX. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. Please. Um, to everyone who's going to be watching this, please capture us. We're begging you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have <laughs> got a, there's a button called the join. It's a join button where you can click and you can donate mm. money to this platform. Mm so that we can buy better cameras. If you can get in touch with Sizwe and you can donate directly to him, if you can buy his book, um, if you can buy whatever we're doing, guys, you leave us vulnerable to have to go and beg money from other people. Mm. Please don't do that. If you contribute a little bit, we can do more for you because we're trying to actually do 
what your politicians are meant to do, which is to serve you. But if you leave us like the politicians to have to go and beg money from someone else, mm. we might be forced to push their agendas, which we probably won't do. But at some point, who knows? But you have a, you like have first dibs to capture us. Like what happened with Afri Forum. Mm. If you give us a hundred rand every month and there's like a thousand of you, that's a hundred thousand and we can fucking do dope shit. So let's make it happen. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Bro, thank you for coming on. Easy, sis. I hear you. So whatever camera is actually working. <laughs> I hear, I hear you. you. <laughs> <laughs>